Hello to all of our viewers out there in YouTube land. Back with the Florida Powerboard Club's channel. Stu Jones, your host, as we continue our coverage of the 2020 edition of the Miami Boat Show Poker Run. It took place in February, as it does every year, and we are on the 25th year as we continue our coverage, now picking up with episode number four. And as always, our tradition is to begin by thanking all of our sponsors before we continue with our event coverage. Florida Powerboat Club's 2020 series sponsors include Deep Impact Custom Boats and their associated brand, Blackwater Boats, Nortec High Performance Boats, Midnight Express Power Boats, Myco Trailers, Performance Boat Center, Mystic Power Boats, Superior Communications, and Mercury Racing Wide Open. So let's just do a quick recap for all of our viewers uh, from our last episode, number three, where we left off. All of the boats had just completed a fantastic lunch stopover for the Thursday run at, well, you guys know exactly where we were. Of course, it was Gilbert's Key Largo, our favorite stopover with over 500 feet of new dock. Plenty of room to keep all of those beautiful power boats while the crews went inside under the shade of that nice tiki bar. And with the music of Bobby Brown, he enjoyed a fantastic lunch and that casual rustic vibe that makes you realize that you've arrived in the Florida Keys. So we now rejoin that Thursday group, uh, about 30 boats all together. You can see a nice variety of uh, center consoles, performance V-bottoms, and of course some big fast catamarans uh, as they now leave the docks from Gilbert's for this big long journey, which is gonna be all together about 10 miles. <laughs> the shortest run ever, uh, but they're gonna weave their way through some of the most scenic waterways in the upper Keys. And a little shout out to Hagen and Leslie, uh, Team Midnight Express, with of course Eric at the helm of that beautiful 43. Miss Jackie riding along with me and uh, Brad Schoenwald on Mike Layton's Adrenaline 47. We had a nice ride down through Biscayne Bay, and I can tell you this machine with its Mercury Racing 1350s is one badass performance V-bottom, and it won the most outrageous boat category, which was presented at the Friday night poker run party. Now, for those of you who pay attention to all of the details on these runs, let's uh, agree that you've got all different class boats running together now. You've got performance V-bottoms and center consoles. You've got some fast cats. Well, the reason for that is we don't really break up the classes for this next leg because it's only a 10-mile leg, and all of the boats are kind of leaving Gilbert's at different times anyway, and we don't really stagger the departures by class because there's not really any need to. Uh, all of the boats are just going to chill and just take a nice scenic ride through the Keys. Uh, not a place to be testing the speed and the performance of your boats because remember we've got at least three sets of mangrove waterways ahead of us which are somewhat narrow and there's a lot of blindside turns. Mind you, there's also a lot of people, just uh, recreational fishermen, just out enjoying the Florida Keys in their own way. And of course, we don't own these waterways. We don't have a permit to go hot rodding through them. So it's important to be considerate of the other boaters. And of course, safety is our number one concern. And we saw a little bit of this boat in the previous episode. This is Mike Layton in his 46 foot adrenaline. The model is called the Speed, got quad mercury racing 400 Rs. And this boat was of course a long time in the making. Following uh, its predecessor was of course that 47 ZRX model that Jackie and I rode on. And another one of those eight skaters uh, registered for the run, uh, Joe Sr. and Joe Jr. Castellana from New York. And quite strangely, I find, you know, the 388 is one of the most popular skaters in our club, and yet this is the only one out of those eight that are registered for this event. We've got a couple of 50s, a 44, two 36s, and a 28. So really good representation in terms of the variety of models of skaters that are here represented on this Miami Boat Show Poker Run. And now taking a closer look at this brand new 42 Mystic, Frank Esposito from New Jersey, Quad Mercury Racing 450Rs. Frank is a very successful car dealer back at home in New Jersey, and I know that he just loves coming down here, especially in February. But this is one of the first 42s to be rigged with those all-new Mercury Racing 450Rs. But uh, a shout out to the guys from New Jersey and to the guys from New York because remember it's cold up there right now and it's a lot of planning that goes into coming down and attending these events and we really appreciate the support from our Northern Club members. 
And we saw a lot of this team back, oh, I'd say about two episodes ago, Michael and Nicole Lund from Massachusetts, uh, 42-foot outer limits. Team Seagull Sizzler, take a close look. It's got triple engines, something we don't see very often uh, in this 42-foot legacy model. And like the two teams we saw previously, of course, they're just happy to be out of the cold coming down here in Florida in the middle of February. And just look at these great shots we're getting from the drone, something we could never do in years past. If we tried this with a helicopter, we would pretty much blow all of the loose items out of the cockpit of the boat, not to mention any loose articles of clothing. Yes, indeed, there have been a few bikini tops lost over the years. But this is just a fantastic way to catch a different perspective of all the boats as they leave Gilbert's and get out onto the waterways. And you can see Nicole, she's a good crew member. Look at her, she's just winding up all those lines as well as the other uh, gentlemen on the boat. So that's a good sign of a crew, guys, if the captain never has to leave the helm. And uh, gonna spend a little time on board now with Team Seakeeper, Captain uh, Brian Molinax. And there's Nick Buckman sitting in the helm seat along with uh, Marissa Everhart, our FPC girl, who's been joining us on a lot of these events. A pair of Mercury Racing 300s on this nicely equipped Boston Whaler. And it's going to be our ride back to Miami today because uh, we're going to go back and assemble the next group, the Friday group. Uh, about another 25 to 30 boats uh, heading down the next day. But you can see the weather's been holding out quite nicely here as we check in on this beautiful little Sea Keeper unit. Nicely stowed here in this compartment on the Boston Whaler. And it's not the little guy anymore. There's actually a smaller unit called the Sea Keeper 1 that was just introduced at the Miami International Boat Show. This boat is equipped with a 2, and a lot of the center consoles in the club are equipped with Sea Keeper 3s as we're learning more and more. And this is becoming a very popular thing uh, in the world of high-performance boating to see these Sea Keeper units being installed. Uh, they're not really getting the effectiveness of the unit right now because we're traveling through such calm, beautiful waters. But let me assure you, once you get into the rough chop, or if you have to slow down in any kind of rough sea conditions, uh, that Sea Keeper unit will keep the boat very, very stable. And now that they have a Sea Keeper 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, and all of the models that are used for the much bigger commercial applications and uh, large yachts, it really doesn't matter what size boat you have anymore. There's a Sea Keeper that fits in your boat, and if you consider the cost of that boat purchasing it new, and what you expect to get out of it. The money that you spend, the extra cost for that Seakeeper unit is money well spent because it, of course, adds to the value of the boat. But more importantly, it adds to the experience of both you, the captain, and all of your crew members and guests to have a nicer and smoother ride and overall a better boating experience. Now here's these mangrove waterways that I told you about earlier and everything is really calm and quiet. You don't really see a lot of traffic, uh, but that's not the way it was earlier. In fact, you can still see all the suds and the foam in the waterway from all the boats that passed through earlier. But it's very important to pass through these waterways carefully and slow down just a little bit. Well, I said it was gonna be a short ride and that's exactly what it is because I can see the resort off in the distance. Remember, there's two places we're staying, the Playa Largo Resort in Key Largo, as well as a Baker's Key Resort. Both of them uh, in this beautiful bay. I call it Sunset Bay. I don't even know if it has an actual name, but it's, I think, the nicest bay in Key Largo. It's got a sandy bottom. And the watercolor is almost always this tropical green or azure. It's what we would all expect to see and at least hope to see when we travel hundreds of miles with our boats to come down and enjoy the Florida Keys. So it looks like everybody's kind of on hold, uh, just getting ready to tie up there at the docks. Uh, everyone is being really patient, which is great. I think a few people wanted to jump in the water and go for a swim. Uh, it's kind of inviting once you get here in the bay. Remember, it's February. A lot of people came in from the cold. I think they just want to jump into these uh, nice bay waters and have a swim and enjoy it, what they came here for. And above all, you know, really there's no rush to get on the docks because, you know, it's about 2.30 in the afternoon. We, you know, we don't have to check in right away. They actually don't want us to check in until closer to 4 p.m. So we've got plenty of time to get all the boats assembled here on the docks. And it's a relatively small marina. But if you start putting the pieces of the puzzle together correctly and you put the right boats together, you can fit a lot of boats in this little harbor. And I think that's what's great about this resort. Nobody realized uh, when it first opened that there was a decent marina there. I came along one day and I saw their docks and said, you know, you guys have potential here. 
but there wasn't a single fender or a single cleat attached to any of the docks. So I don't know who their contractor was or what they told them, but they had these slips all laid out. They had power stations, power pedestals on every dock, but not a single fender, not a single cleat. Go figure. So we helped them uh, with that situation and we talked to the management here and we convinced them that these things needed to be done in order to attract the boaters to come to the resort. And they listened to us and the next thing you know, we had all the materials I ordered for them, uh, the fenders and the cleats. They got a contractor and got everything installed and look, here is the end result, a beautiful marina that can hold about 30 boats if you pack them in real tightly. So I think that these drone shots can really tell that story a little better because uh, you know, when I talk about the puzzle, well, first of all, look at the slips like where Sal's cigarette is. Most of these slips only have about a nine and a half or 10 foot beam. So you can fit almost any V bottom in there as long as it's not a big center console. And then you have this big T head or bulkhead where you can see where the skaters are right now. And if you tie boats that are similar together, everything works out so much better. Uh, you can get in at least three rows, possibly four, depending on the length of the boats. But the key is to getting the cockpit lined up with the dock platform, but you can let the whole front of the boat hang off the other end. You know, it doesn't have to be tied to the dock. And the outboard cats uh, can really get into the shallow water because you can trim the motors up. And that gave us some more space that we could now use right up close to the restaurant. So you can see that the marina is nowhere near being full yet. Of course, on this Thursday run, we still have a bunch of boats coming down Friday. But you can see from all of these images that with careful placement, and with lining the correct boats up and proper tying, you can get a lot of boats in this little basin. And that makes for a great guest experience because the resort is simply fabulous. The rooms are incredible. The grounds are beautiful. The pool is amazing. Uh, and I love this little restaurant called Soul by the Sea. You know, you can sit up there on the deck with a drink and have lunch looking out over the bay and over the marina. It's just a great destination. So let's just hang around the docks here and uh, watch our crews as they get settled in, pull the luggage off the boats. And if it were me, I'd be thinking, get my key to the hotel, get my bag in the room, get a nice big frozen drink and head for the pool. But I'm going to have to put my hotel room and my frozen drink on hold for just one night because we're gonna depart and head back to Miami now with Team Seakeeper on this 35 foot Boston Whaler, Seakeeper equipped, of course. And I would have to say that this is about the best time of the day to go boating uh, anywhere in the Florida Keys. It's kind of, it's not quite twilight yet. It's actually happy hour, which we're totally missing actually. But this alternative, well, it didn't exactly suck. I mean, this center console is so well equipped as we just weave our way through the mangroves in the upper keys. We're gonna be backtracking on the exact same course that we took down earlier, but managing speeds of about 50 miles per hour all the way back. So it's gonna be about an hour and a half ride all the way back to the docks at Hallover Marine Center. One thing I did fail to mention earlier is that the Seakeeper team were actually a safety boat on the way down for the Thursday run. We had two safety boats and the uh, medics that we hired from the Miami-Dade Fire Rescue got on board with uh, Joe Balistrieri on his 33-foot Everglades and he took them back to the Port Miami. So we're gonna be doing that all over again on Friday morning. 
Once again, uh, Team Seakeeper is going to be our official safety boat, and what a perfect ride to do that. These Mercury Racing 300s push her along just nicely. It's a nice heavy hull too, so it rides well in the chop, and it's got lots of room on board in case they do have to respond to any incidents. Well, we're gonna cross our fingers and hope there are no incidents whatsoever throughout the weekend, but it's nice to have experienced boaters like Brian Molinax and Nick Buckman from Team Seakeeper to provide us with this excellent uh, platform for safety management and no better platform than this Boston Whaler fully equipped with a Seakeeper 2. Well, you guys just joined us for about a 65 mile ride back from Key Largo all the way to North Miami. Team Seakeeper and the FPC staff on board and having just a wonderful ride back on this beautiful t-shirt February day. We're gonna meet up with the rest of the crew at Duffy's uh, for the Thursday night captain's meeting. We're gonna skip those formalities and we'll see all you guys on the dock Friday morning right here at Hallover Marine Center for the next departure. And we awoke to yet another beautiful day here in North Miami, Hallover Beach, and of course, Bell Harbor just off in the distance as our Friday morning teams congregate here at Hallover Marine Center with that landmark lighthouse and this pair of incredible Wiggins forklifts rated at over 70,000 pounds each. And of course, the Hallover Marine staff who are rolling out their red carpet to us as they always do on these Florida Powerboat Club events. And this is a scene that you'll always see uh, just a moments before a poker run starts. That's getting all these boats launched like this big 48 MTI Excuses owned by Bill Betts. And don't forget about these center consoles. A lot of them came a long way to attend. And these two Midnight Express models, a 37 and a 43, had come straight from the Miami Boat Show. Pretty quiet around the docks right now as we wait for some of our teams to arrive, but it's a good time to get your camera out and take some shots of all the cool boats here. And we even had this little visitor. Yep, that's a big old manatee uh, hanging right down underneath Bill Betts' uh, MTI alongside the docks. And he's a regular here at Hallover Marine Center. Hey, guy. Oh, look at you. Okay. Oh, going down now. Oh, he's a long one. Oh my God, look at how big he is. Or she. You got your own manatee following you around from Papado? That's a fast manatee. Friday morning, haul over Marine Center and uh, looks like the docks are starting to get very busy here. Uh, we've got a smaller group today, about 25 boats rolling out with us on the 25th anniversary of the Miami Boat Show Poker Run. And it's gonna be family day for Stu and Jackie. We've got the kids on board and uh, Brought along a girlfriend, so that's five, plus Terry Sobo and his wife Chrissy decided to ju jump in, so that's gonna be seven. And I got everybody's luggage, so it's a, gonna be a testament to just how good Project 1080 is gonna handle this heavy load today as we head here out of Hallover Inlet on a nice day, a beautiful February morning. Uh, light winds out of the west, which means it's gonna be calm in the ocean side, so I think a lot of guys are fearing that Hallover Inlet after seeing all those videos, but I think today, Hallover Inlet is going to surprise a lot of people and not be so rough as we head offshore for that first leg down in Miami. Well, checking the time here now, 10 minutes after 10. We just sent out the group text and told everybody, get ready for that first poker card. I'm going to hand off the first card here at Hallover Marine Center. I'm on Project 1080, and I'm going to fire up these Mercury Racing 540s, which are now at 175 hours of operating time. A great 2019 on the Project 1080 and a great start to 2020 now our second poker run here with the florida powerboat club i had the family helping me out today so i recruited tyler right, to start handing out the poker cards as we shoved off with david and jenny landsman in their 43 foot midnight express 
But you know how I have my rules about, you know, dudes picking up cards when there's girls in the boat? Well, I used that same principle here, and I took the pole away from Tyler and gave it to his cute girlfriend, Julia, and I designated her as our official card girl for the day. So I think I made a good choice. He was so pissed. So while those poker cards are being handed off at Holliver Marine Center, at about 40 miles north of there, at Pompano Air Park, our coast-to-coast -coast helicopter R-44 was getting fired up, and our FPC chopper crew was getting on board so we could document all of the Friday activities so that all of our club members and our sponsors and all you guys out there watching our YouTube channel could get a bird's eye view of all the poker run fun. You know, I couldn't help notice the gray sky and the rain on the helicopter windshield you know, these guys are only 20 minutes north of where we started the run today, so it just shows you how different the weather can be from one county to the next on any given day. Of course, we're hoping for the best weather conditions possible, but the fact that the winds have changed and come out of the west have really given us those ideal conditions. Here we are now in North Miami, you know, just a 15-minute flight, and now blue skies, light cloud, very, very low winds, and fantastic conditions for going offshore today with the Friday run. And this is a beautiful shot as all of our teams begin to congregate uh, just outside the entrance to Hallover Marine Center. And this is the best place for everybody. Once you get your poker card, you know, there's not a lot of room to maneuver around in that basin. So the best thing to do is just to come out out here and wait around in the intracoastal. Not a lot of boat traffic here early on a Friday, so it's not like you're getting waked. If you did this on a Sunday afternoon, you would be getting wakes over your bow from these big cruisers and yachts that go by on plane. Can't help noticing the incredible variety on these fleets, you know, from that performance V bottom to an Everglade center console. The very first time we've seen this boat, a Renaissance Prowler Cat, check out those four Mercury Racing 450Rs. 
Everybody's been very calm and patient, just waiting for all the boats to come out so we can have a nice start. And that's what I like about these runs. You know, people understand that we're a group and we like to boat as a group. And we've got a helicopter that, you know, all of these club members essentially paid for through their club fees and the sponsors as well. And we want everybody to be included in these video cuts. And the only way we can do that is if everybody holds back and waits for the pace boat to come along. And like I said to you earlier, we've got a fully loaded pace boat, seven crew members, all their luggage and a full tank of fuel. So those Mercury Racing 540s have their work cut out for them today. And you can see most of the boats all scattered out here through the Intracoastal. Remember, we're still stopping at Grove Harbor Marina. Going to pick some boats up there. And there's the money shot as we make our way out through Hallover Inlet. Uh, incident free today. Remember, it's the winds and the currents and the tides that affect these uh, conditions that we often get in Hallover. And that's why there's at least seven or eight websites now where that's all they do is showcase people having a terrible day of boating <laughs> as they mash through the waves. And as many of us have witnessed in those videos, it's not always a good outcome. But it's a great outcome today as we all hit the throttles and make our way out through the cut. Gonna be turning right at his south and heading down the beach for about an eight mile run to government cut. And we're gonna make our way back inside. So let's start off with our introductions as we catch up with David Carey from Maryland, his 37 foot Midnight Express Team Hard Eights, Mercury Racing 400 Rs. And that Team Hard Eights has some very special significance his first event was the Key West Poker Run a couple of months earlier, and he won the Poker Run in a final draw with, guess what, a pair of eights. And I can't think of a better team than, than Game Changer for David and Jenny Landsman in Maryland. 43-foot Midnight Express Open with five Mercury Racing 450Rs. And the reason why Game Changer works is because David, well, he changes the game all the time. One example I can tell you about, when I rode on his brand new Midnight 43 that had five Mercury Racing 450Rs, that was at the Nashville Mercury Racing product launch for the new motor. I rode the boat, and I think he used it twice, and then the next thing you know, it was sold to a guy in Canada. So this boat now replaced that 43, and he brought this boat out for the first time at the Key West Poker Run just a few months earlier. And here's a beautiful cigarette, 42X, Stephen Barker from New York with X-Factor. Two Mercury Racing 1100s are the perfect power match for this boat. Let's listen in to that 2200 horsepower. And I know that a whole bunch of you viewers out there love the sound of that roaring engines. Well, guess what, guys? The new engines, especially the twin turbo 1100s and 1350s, have a tuned exhaust, and they're just not as loud as they used to be. And for those of us who still want to be a part of social distancing, well, I can't think of a better way to do social distancing than this right here. We're all in our own little cockpit, enjoying the perfect day on the water. And for those of you who love the sound of roaring engines, well, these Mercury Racing 540s, they're fully equipped with CMI headers and straight pipes through the transom. And I know that's a sound you guys want to hear. Just amazing conditions today here as we kick off this Friday morning. Now catching up with Fred and Judy Revis from South Carolina who have transplanted to Florida with their new home in Lighthouse Point. This is one of two MTIs that they own. This 48 is powered by Mercury Racing 1350s. Their other boat, well, it's a 42 MTI center console powered by Quad Mercury Racing 400Rs. That's the boat they use for Bahamas trips and those Sunday afternoon cruises around Lighthouse Point, Florida. Well guys, we're already at that half hour mark. Boy, it came fast on this episode. 
But as we depart now from this Friday group of Florida Powerboat Club's Miami Boat Show Poker Run, we're going to have to say goodbye for the time being. we got plenty more to come in our next episode, number five, as we continue this 25-year celebration with members of the Florida Powerboat Club on this Florida Keys getaway in the middle of February. It takes place every year for the Miami Boat Show Poker Run. It's all right here on Florida Powerboat Club's YouTube channel. You don't want to miss another episode, so be sure to subscribe and also hit that notification bell so you'll get all the updates every time a new episode is released. We are very much aware of the COVID crisis. It's still on, but we are taking very strategic steps in keeping our boating activities happening here with the club. Be sure to go on our club website at flpowerboat.com for all of the updates of the events, including the upcoming Key West Offshore Poker Run, November 11th to the 15th, 2020. Even though the powerboat races have been canceled, we are going to keep the event alive, and we already have well over 100 teams registered. You can also follow the Florida Powerboat Club on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. So thanks to all of you for sticking with us here on our Florida Powerboat Club channel. This is Stu Jones along with our producer Ryan McCoy here in the Pompano Beach studios. Guys, be safe out there. Be sure to wear your life jackets and always respect your fellow boaters. We'll see you next time. Florida Powerboat Club's 2020 series sponsors include Deep Impact Custom Boats and their associated brand, Blackwater Boats, Nortec High Performance Boats, Midnight Express Power Boats, Myco Trailers, Performance Boat Center, Mystic Power Boats, Superior Communications, and Mercury Racing Wide Open.